This morning, we're out in Dublin, Ohio, and I'm doing some downspout to drain repair. As you can see, we have separation between the downspout and the drain tile. This one's about 25 years old, but over time, just so much water's been coming down the spout, it has a very long run. And it's bringing a lot of water to this corner. But just over time, it's uh, moved down probably about, oh, a good five inches. So it's holding water. I'm gonna put some water in it, then show you just how much water it's holding. It's this way on this downspout to drain. It's also, or was, the same on this one back here. I've done the repair to achieve proper slope out to the main line. If you look at that, that's got nice fall now. It was sloping back towards the house. Now, we have it to where it's sloped away from the house, going to the main line, and on out to the street. Be sure to be thorough in your troubleshooting before beginning repairs on the downspout to drain. Run hose water through the drain tile at the downspout and be sure that it takes all the water. If it backs up and overflows, more than likely you have another problem existing in the drain tile that needs addressed. And it's not all going to go away. So if you look down in there, that, that pipe is full at least up through the 90 degree elbow that's down there. And this is four inch pipe. I'm gonna stick a shovel handle down in there. We're gonna see just how much water it's holding. All right, that's to the bottom. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's holding water all the way up to there. So about five, maybe six inches of water. That's how much that pipe has sunk down. It's still moving water, but it's, it's uh, made it so there's some separation between the pipes. And in heavy rains, it just can't push all that water down through the pipe into the main line, so it backs up. And since the pipe is full up and actually sloped back towards the house, gravity's not working so well in our favor here. So this repair is something that the homeowner can easily do themselves as long as you got the gumption for the digging. Now, always bring out plastic whenever possible while you're digging. It keeps your uh, work area nice and neat. And if you've got sod, you want to save that as well. Just cut them into one foot squares and place it on a piece of plastic and it keeps it very clean out here. Otherwise, it just becomes a muddy mess. But you can see that I found the pipe here and on this side it's about flat at best over here and this is right where the main line is. It's just starting to show me that it's, it's going downhill to that T connection. There's a T connection right here. So fortunately I don't have to go all the way out this way. The main line is right here, and I'm just going to replace this section from the downspout to the main line and get it to have really good fall. Back here, Back here I'll slice through the pipe with my shovel. So once you've got your pipe all dug up, you can cut it. Just use that shovel and slice it. Remove it to wherever it is you want to replace it to. In this case, it's uh, right here to a T connection. And I'm going to come back and get all that out. Fill it up here to uh, the proper slope to come down to that line. And we're going to tie in a new downspot to drain all the way over here to the main line. Okay, right now I'm doing what's known as a dry fit, and I've put a 90 on the end of my piece of pipe, but I have not glued it yet. I made sure that 
the 90 is all the way on through the coupling of it. And I'm going to cut the pipe just a little bit long here. And then get it cut to the proper length before I glue anything. Do your best to cut a continuous piece from the wall out to the main line whenever possible. The fewer the breaks you have in the line lowers the chance of root infiltration in the future. Good hacksaw will work so well. Cuts it pretty straight and uh, goes right through it almost like butter. Put your rough cut pipe into place. You may have a few obstacles to go under like I do here. Another reason to cut it rough and get it close. Then make another measurement to include the length of the coupling you're tying into for a final cut. Alright, that's looking pretty darn close. I'm going to go ahead and glue my fitting. There is a variety of glues you can use once glue has been applied. Push the coupling onto the pipe. Generous amount of OD heavy duty glue. And you can see that I've got it all the way into the lip of this 90 as far as it'll go. It's looking real good. Now that you have the proper length of pipe, you can hook up the pipe to the main line T connection. Do your best to keep all the mud, dirt, or debris off of the end of the pipe where you're making your hookup. So I put that piece of pipe into this T connection, wiggled it in there as far as it'll go. And that's looking like it's got great slope. I'm going to be sure that my connections are good and tight in there. So I'm using a pry bar. You can use a shovel or something of that nature and just push gently, not too hard, just to be sure it's in there in these couplings as far as it'll go. So the pipe's just where I want it. It's got nice slope down here to the T. And now I'm going to just cut a, a piece of pipe to adapt from the downspout to the drain tile. Now place your downspout adapter onto the downspout pipe. Put glue on your downspout to drain extension piece, but only on the 90 degree elbow side. From this angle, you can see I've cut that pipe to extend over top of the downspout up about two boards onto the siding of the house. I've made the same type of measurement here on the back left corner as well. It's up about two boards. Uniformity is always nice. It's the only thing you're going to see once the job is done. Alright, so I've got the drain tile in place, nice slope on both of my downspout to drains. All I have left to do is cover this up. I'm Chris with Atlantic Drain. Remember, it's easy once you know how.